Black Gold Arts is a Manchester-based organisation that celebrates and platforms working-class black creatives, members of the LGBT plus community and their allies. Hi, this is DJ Mixtress and this is Black Gold Arts at the Whitworth. I'm joined here by founder Darren Pritchard, Stuart, the Bolly Witch, Valkyda and DJ Stan. How are you guys? Good, good, good. Well, I'm tired. <laughs> We're right in the thick of it. These have all done their sets and their performances. So yeah, we've got two more kind of um, sets to go. You finishing it off. So, so I'm good. I'm very proud. I'm very proud. I'm very, yeah, I'm very happy that this could happen after like it being shut down two years on the run because of the pandemic and yeah and my and this was like my day so I got to curate it and pick the artists that I want and yeah it's just I just think it's been a really beautiful vibe and kind of like a really good launch of hopefully something bigger in the future to come. Beautiful vibes today so you've all like kind of been involved. Val do you want to just tell us about a little bit about your performance and what was going on there? Yeah so um I, uh, I, well, I feel like I did get told it was a family friendly event, but I didn't really listen. So it was a bit of a shock when I saw like toddlers. I thought it was like some rehoming center, but clearly not. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, my number was, oh, sorry. Uh, my number was about British values and it was just a, a commentary on the stereotypes that South Asian people in Britain face and also taking a bit of the piss out of the EDL and racism. So I was going to say sorry to all the EDL members, but I'm not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was the gist of it. Nothing too heavy. <laughs> and it's so important for spaces like this to exist for the black communities, queer communities, and the platforms that this creates, Darren, as well, especially. So in terms of like your involvement, is there any highlights that you've had of being involved, really? Well, um, all of it, because it's been really curated about well, Barmy Cutting Stand set. That wasn't me, which I was gutted about. I, I'm putting it officially on camera. I owe you two two-hour sets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And stuff. Um, no, um, no. It, it's kind of it's 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 gone really really well. And you never know how these things are gonna go. You never know how. Could you feel like a kid at a party? Is anyone gonna turn up to my party and stuff? But yeah, I think all the artists have been fantastic. They've dealt with it, and it's it's out and it's in a strange place. We're in the Whitworth, right in the middle of kind of like Rush Home, Humes over there, my side. The local community, yes, and the the, the the audience has been really eclectic, which is really nice. It's been a good mix. With yeah. yourselves, it's a, it's a great platform, a special edition. What we're trying to do is highlight one-off cultural events and this is a perfect space and setting and environment for that. Yeah. So in terms of like your performance, Wally Witch, do you want to talk us about that as well? Yeah, so I mean, again, because it was like a family-friendly event, being the Bolly Witch, everyone knows I do Bollywood horror drag. So it's like, what on earth can I do that isn't spitting blood and dying on stage type thing? But instead, I wanted to do something that really just kind of like transported you to India like when you just hear the music happening you hear the wind and everything it's just kind of like feeling that Indian vibe like kind of like a sunset um, and I really wanted to just do a lot of dance a lot of veil work with my fans just to kind of get the crowd going and the crowd was so responsive and lovely which is really great um, but obviously I had to you know give a bit of sass a bit of sensuality in with it as well Hopefully the families are okay with that um, and, and everything else. So it was just, it was such a, a, a great platform to be on, especially considering everyone else that's been on that stage as well to actually share the stage with so much talent. And as well, yeah. And as well as that, like uh, the great thing about events like this as well is that no one is like above anyone. Everyone is like really, really artistic in their way and they give it on stage and we're all here to support everyone. Like no one's here to kind of like do anyone over or anything like that. It's like supporting everybody and I love that. Yeah. That equal footing and stand. Do you want to add any highlights for today or your, or your involvement in the in the festival itself? Um, I'm a, uh, a DJ um, and I run a cuter box centered um, queer dance party as well. Um, so I really appreciate spaces like this that, you know, centers you know, queer community. Um, and I think it's really important that we like center like these communities and yeah, and it's a very special vibe today. It's really nice being out, you know, like, you know, being out there, like such a great energy. Yeah. And Stuart, you compare and host and do your thing. 
So tell us how, how that's gone today. It's been brilliant. I've kind of come in from the different end of the spectrum to the other performers that lined up here at the moment. Me and Darren have worked together for a long, long time um, creatively. And then, um, yes, I'm the host to the catwalk extravaganza, family catwalk extravaganza. And I think that me and Darren always developed the piece with families in mind, really. And to be honest with you, we've not been that successful in just having families we've had a lot of adults that like the show <laughs> which is really really thing because the message is very child focused and very family focused but that's been lovely because it's been equally as appreciated but today has probably been the first time that I think we both sat back and enjoyed that family element and seen them kids genuinely vibing off the message and it being centered around them so yeah I think it's um it's been beautiful to kind of um have that tick now and that validation from the little kids because I genuinely at one point yeah, yeah, yeah. wanted yeah. to I want to praise them and seeing them praise the whole beauty of what the piece does has been really nice. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching you actually at that point. It was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. one thing that I really wanted to do with um, what I think is really special about the Cutie Park community is that it feels like a Cutie Park community. We say black as in politically yeah. black, but I wanted to show that the um, Park community is all of this and more and I think I think in Manchester we've got a real good understanding of the broad range of what is black and what is political and we're not fighting amongst ourselves and going yeah it's multifaceted and we're not saying we're not black we're not this we, we all understand that there's racism that exists and there may be different intersectionalities and I really I, I was really really like when I was curating it and I did kind of do the kind of like this is kind of East Asia this kind of South Asia because I think giving those giving those communities their own space and I didn't want to like I could have mixed it up and it was kind of like, oh, should I mix it up? And I was like, no, because I was like, you sometimes just need to see just like one, two, three, four, to show that you, because it's generally like, I'm the only black one or there maybe only one Asian one or South East Asian. I wanted to show a plethora that there's more than just that and give each each kind of community and section their, their own space because I thought it was really, really important. And that's what we wanted to kind of like, that's what I wanted to do on the Saturday. I said, I want a show, because it's so special, Manchester. You've got Stan running the Cutie Park space, and people will be like, why is he running? It's like, it gets, it's so, it's so rich. It's like in Manchester, the diversity and the conversations that I have with like, like my, my South Asian, my East Asian, my Africans, my West Indians. It seems like we're way ahead in Manchester in terms of in terms of we're taking the next step and going actually as we're stronger together. And that's what this festival was about, and it's just showing that diversity of like colour, so to speak. And I think yeah. Um, if I could just add as well, um, if I could just add, it's like us knowing each other as artists as well, opportunities and platforms like this celebrate. So now when we're in arts um, forums and stuff like that, we know each other as a, as a small community. So you're building those alliance creativity and that support. And I think that's really good that outside of this, we can be walking on the streets going, hi, 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 because we know each other. And we've, we've been on a creative journey or on a creative platform together collaborative yeah. well yeah. thank you very much for your time today enjoy thank the rest you. thank you so this is dj mitch just signing out for special edition peace okay. Thanks guys for watching our one-off special about Black Gold Arts and talking to the founder Darren Pritchard and some of the performers and artists that are involved in this spectacular two-day festival. See you next time on the next episode of Special Edition. Mm -hmm.